called Sparky Pete in Liverpool, coming to you from the BS7671 Information Centre, which also doubles as my mum's garage. And what I've got for you is um, an introduction, really, to the regs. Um, thinking of it as a beginner's guide, but hopefully there'll be bits and pieces in there for the more experienced as well. But an introduction, nonetheless. What is it? It's a book. And um, what we're looking at is obviously the 18th edition, and it's the 18th edition of a book uh, of which the first edition came out in 1882. And um, it's non statutory. That's a question that quite often comes up in exams, which means it's not actually law in and of itself. But um, I'll show you in a little while. There's a statement in there from the HSC saying that if we follow the guidance in this book, that we're likely to stay on the right side of the law effectively. So what's the purpose of such a book? Now I've jumped to, as you can see, uh, chapter 12, Object and Effects. Then with the object, what's the point of the regs? And 120.1, um, the first one that comes up there, this standard contains the rules for the design, erection, and verification of electrical installations so as to provide for safety a proper functioning for the intended use. So basically, if we follow the instructions and information in this book, then we're able to design, erect, and verify electrical installations uh, so that they're safe and that they work correctly. It's non-statutory, as I mentioned, that comes up on exams uh, and they like you to pick you know, from a list which is statutory, which is non-statutory, which is law of the land in and of itself and which isn't. I mean, this is, is guidance. But um, that note from the HSE, uh, what it says there is that if we work to this standard, um, we're likely to achieve conformity with the relevant parts of the Electricity at Work Regulations 1989. But the hedge and the bets there aren't they likely to achieve conformity, but it's, uh, it's legal speak, isn't it? That All of the statutory regulations, by the way, which are relevant to us as electricians, are in Appendix 2. So who's it for, this book? Well, me and you, for starters. Well, if you look on the screen here, I mean, this is talking about the qualification, but it's still relevant. It's aimed at practising electricians with relevant experience and other allied professionals, e.g. surveyors, consultants, and other trades needing to update and enhance their understanding of the IE wiring regulations. It may also be suitable for anyone requiring an understanding of BS 7671. Now, if I'm taking a class and after I've made my uh, introductions, I realise I've got a room full of practising electricians, I think, oh, game on, you know, it's an easy week for them and an easy week for me. But... Um, that's not usual. I mean, it's usual to have a range of, of um, different people in the group, starting with, you know, people who are approaching this subject for the very first time and possibly ending with people who came in on the, the 14th edition, you know, have been through every edition since. Um, it doesn't make an electrician this qualification. That's something that's important to say. Occasionally you'll get, I've had it before where people have said, oh, you know, I'm an electrician. And because I'm in the game, I'll say, you know, where did you study? What have you done? Oh, I've got the 18th edition or I've got the 17th edition. You know, on its own, it doesn't make you an electrician. Um, another thing is, you might say, well, when's the best time to start studying this subject? Well, any time, really. Um, even as an apprentice, you know, if you have an appreciation of the regs from the very beginning, that's, you know, very helpful to you. But at any point in your career, you know, to have a detailed understanding of the regs and and take a qualification is is definitely uh, you know advisable. It's not only the book itself. When the regulations changes, it's a, it's a massive multi-million pound publishing empire that comes into play. Um, what we've got there is the on-site guide. It's um, a condensed version of some of the information in the regs. It's intended to something that you would you know have on you in the bottom of your toolbox. Whereas uh, the regs itself is something that's uh, you know back at base possibly. And the other thing to realise as well is that um, we've got a series of eight guidance notes that come with the uh, the standard edition of the regs. That's probably the most um, the most sort of popular one, which is guidance note three, which is on inspection and testing. So, yeah. So as you can see, uh, when the regs changes, there's a whole massive publishing empire that will change with it. When I'm teaching, uh, rightly or wrongly, I just stick to the regs because, as far as the exam's concerned, I mean, even though the on-site guide is useful and all of the other sources of information are useful, when you're dealing with the exam and if you're talking about, you know, a condensed course over a, a small number of days, I just fo focus exclusively on the book because uh, that's the only permitted reference material. It's the only thing you're allowed to take into the exam. 
for reference. If we talk about what kind of installations are governed by the regs, well, we're looking at the scope there on page, it starts on page 15. And uh, what I think is interesting is if you are carrying out domestic rewires, you, you're probably more likely to feel the impact of the regs in your day-to-day -day activities. There may be someone um, is apparently doing you know more technical jobs, someone who works in factory maintenance or whatever, you know, where a lot of the time they're not installing, so they're not feeling the impact of the regs, you know, as much as you might do if you're carrying out a domestic rewire. I mean, sometimes I'll get factory electricians who think that uh, the regs doesn't apply to them. Well, you know, I can assure you it does. Industrial premises, we can see that there. The second half of that scope statement tells us, um, well, I always say that the, the, those installations are kind of half in and half out, if you like. I say it that way. In other words, you know, if you're carrying out the emergency lighting as an example, uh, you'd need to be conversant with BS7671 and also two other British standards, as it says there, you know, 5266 and 1838. And then also um, it tells us underneath there uh, what kind of installations are excluded from the scope. So, for example, equipment of aircraft is not included in the scope of the regs. Now, again, um, your exam, I'll, I'll talk in detail about the structure of the exam at some point, but your exam kind of leads off with, uh, is it statutory, non-statutory? And you also get questions about the scope. Um, they don't always spell it out for you with, with that. Um, but like I say, the, the scope information is on page 15 and 16. So we've talked about, you know, what that book is, uh, who it applies to. Uh, what kind of installations it applies to, and the immediate range of other guidance, so the on-site guide and the um, guidance note three. Uh, if we talk about when does the regs apply to us directly as a book that we, we use, well, for a lot of us, um, the only time we encounter a regs book is when we come to do a regs exam. Um, the other end of the spectrum, I was doing some in-house training with a company where they had a number of well-thumbed regs books, you know, out on the desk. This was a design company. Um, so, also as well, in terms of, you know, when we encounter the regs, uh, it's things like when we get visits from competent person schemes, when we have uh, a point of controversy on site, or when there's something that we just, is new to us that we just, that, that we don't know. For example, when I'm taking a class and I go through the special installations or locations, what I sort of emphasise is to realise, you know, when you're working in one of those situations, to realise things might be, um, you know, a bit different. So that's a situation where you might end up getting the, the, the regs book out. Also as well, um, when we encounter this kind of information, you know, some of you might be signed up to uh, IET forums, wiring matters, professional electrician, electrical contractors, news, etc. And that's a nice way of kind of updating uh, information as it comes out, you know, drip, drip, rather than having to learn it all in one big swoop, you know. In terms of how we use that book to find information that's relevant to our working lives and also how we use that book to pass exams that's going to be the subject of uh, other videos that i'll do it's always a balance with me when i'm taking a class because uh, i like to be able to get across some technical information um i want them to pass the exam but if i focus on either of those two things exclusively you know it's at the detriment of the other so with me it's ten it tends to be you know to to give you a good working knowledge of that book, you know, in a nutshell, and, you know, to get you through that exam. So there we are. I mean, I, I actually enjoy it as a subject. I mean, you might think that's strange, but um, I don't go around quoting regs, and when I'm out of the classroom, I don't think of it so much. But, um, you know, I take a professional interest. I follow changes, and, uh, you know, I enjoy the interaction with the candidates, probably uh, most of all, you know. Anyway, this is uh, Sparky Pete signing off. Um, as always, constructive feedback, which appreciated, because nobody knows everything, and there's always more to say, especially on this one, we can go on forever on this one. <laughs>